All right, welcome back to another episode of G-Man Fishing. We are shooting a how-to video for catching fish at Primeville and Ochoco Reservoir. Of course, this tech, these techniques will work in just about any reservoir that has trout, bass, uh, crappies. You know, uh, it's just we, we're not catching a lot of crappies and stuff like that because we're not really fishing for them. We're mostly fishing for whatever bites, and more often than not, it's bass and trout. Uh, but you know, somebody asked me to do this video. I was hoping they would meet me out here so I could do it, you know, in person. But um, last week things didn't work out, so this week I'm here and I'm going to be shooting this video. I don't know how good it's going to tr turn out, but I'm going to try and do the best I can for y'all, so that way you have a little idea of what's going on. So we're going to start out with with the power bait setup. Um, with any any uh um um line that I or any thing that I'm throwing I'm gonna have a leader line okay so and I'm gonna use the uh, clear fluorocarbon it's supposed to be invisible to the fish uh, that way you know they're, they're not seeing it and I'm doing eight pound I'll go as low as four pound on on uh, that just depends on uh, the conditions and how clear the water is, is and stuff so having a good spool of uh, leaders is always the plus and then this is the power bait rod it's just my it's also my bass fishing cat fishing I do everything with this rod um, but today is pretty much just doing the how-to and this is gonna be the one I chose to do the power bait rod and so I'm gonna have a small hook here I forget the size of that I got the package somewhere but just a small one that way you can put the ball of um, power bait on there and so then you're gonna go up, and a lot of people will use a swivel, and and then they'll make a leader, and then they'll have a big old egg sinker up here, so they can cast away out there. Uh, I cast pretty far with this, with just a small weight. So, and what I'm gonna do is 18 to 24 inches long, sometimes 12. Just always adjust and make different um, adjustments so that you catch more fish. Um, sometimes they don't want it that close to the bottom of. 18 to 24 sometimes you gotta go more sometimes I'll run a double hook set up and you run two power baits at the same time and in Oregon you're allowed three hooks on one one rod so you can run multiple flavors of power bait so and this is just a, I think almost a quarter of an ounce weight that I'm using so I can cast it pretty far and then I also got the treble hooks the size 18 treble hooks for power bait as well um, and that works good for for these fish and then you got multiple different size um, um, split shots to put out there especially if like you're doing like the worm and bobber you know a float setup because uh, you don't want to use one of these bigger ones on the, the floats because it'll drag it underneath the water so you go with the smaller one like that one or that one and you don't I find out that you don't really need anything bigger than one of those two there when you're throwing a float and pretty much what that does well let's just stay with this for now since we're doing a power bait and then you want to have uh, multiple uh, different flavors of power bait and like I said sometimes you want to throw two of them at, out there at the same time on the same rig and just having several different types this is the trout or turbo dough bait this is the Extreme Scent um, Charm Glow. It's got glitter and stuff in there. And then you also have the corn, uh, yeah, the corn um, flavor. And I've got one more flavor, I just didn't dig it out. Uh, and that's the egg, salmon egg um, flavor, which usually works pretty good also here. So let's go ahead and move on to the worm and bobber setup. And so I've got a worm threader here so a lot of times I like to use a whole worm gives more action and stuff makes it easier to thread your worm on your hook um, and then of course you got to have the beautiful fish catching worms you know to make that work and then uh, we got a still head rod we use it for multi-purpose fishing um, we're using braid because braid uh, when you're throwing a float works out nice because the braid floats it's not sinking down in the water the fish can't see it um, so it works out nicely when you're throwing a float 
and then like a well, then we got a size four hook here uh, with this cinch knot and then we got a little split shot because with these trout floats you don't want to use too big of one and you can always do a different kind of float you can do a slip float uh, a clip float uh, and don't always matter what type of float you use like if I'm fishing in 80 feet of water and I need to go like 50 feet deep to catch the fish on a float I, I'll use a slip bobber because then I can reel my float stop all the way into my reel and still be able to cast it just fine because there are times where the fish aren't biting at my normal depths so I try different depths and so was, um, I got a clear I got a clear monofilament leader here tied to the uh, braided line up here and that's uh, an improved cinch knot is what that is or I'll use a double uni knot to the braid and then up here I got the trout float or easy trout float is what they call them but I just call them a trout float and is what it does is it's got this little peg here and you just take it out take it out then you just take it out of that um, slit they got in the uh, easy float and then you can then you do that and then you just reattach it and then the thing about these floats are nice is that you can pull it down to adjust your depth or you can pull it up the line to adjust your depth so that way you know you don't have to be afraid about trying different um, depths and I like longer rod when I'm float fishing because sometimes you got seven or eight feet of line behind you that you're trying to cast out and so it's good to have um, a nice long rod on that and so that's basically what we're doing for for the worm and bobber um, setup. And that's an 8.6 Okuma, or that's actually the IM8 Berkeley rod with the Shimano uh, Sierra, or however they say that for that one. So next we're gonna go with the fly rod, and then so we got a multiple different types of flies here. Uh, my favorites are the marabou and the leeches when I'm in a reservoir. There's the pink marabou that I like to use right there. And then I've got green marabou, which is right here. And then I've got leeches. I got mostly black leeches and green leeches. Uh, I like to have an assortment of them. Uh, and as well as the white I'd like to have more of and the uh, brown leech and then you, you just got a multiple uh, amount of different flies to try out and you just never know what's going to work sometimes a stone fly sometimes a dry fly um, and it's just all about experimentation with with anything when you're fly fishing never be afraid to adjust and do different things because you're going to catch more fish when you do that and that's the fly box and then the fly rod's just a eight foot eight nine weight uh walmart special um the real even says eight nine weight and then i've got a nine ten foot leader here uh on on this and so is what i'll do is i'll tie that directly to the fly line itself and it's a floating fly line uh, with with the I don't know the name of the knot because I'm not real familiar with it I just know how to tie it and so I've got eight pound fluorocarbon I'm a big fan of the fluorocarbon because it's supposed to be invisible and so is what I'll do is I'll take a marabou fly tie it to the uh, leader and then I'll take a clear fluorocarbon tie it to the uh, shank of the Hey, he's got one, he's got one. Oh. Let's go, let's go, let's, let's go. go. Let's go. Oh, he's got one, he's got one. Oh, Ooh, he's got one. Nice. Oh, oh that's that a, a nice, nice trout. fish. That's a nice hey, trout. You, you need to keep tension? How much yep. tension? Keep, just keep. like this? Yeah, just like that. All right, you just take your time with him. Yeah. Everyone wants to run? Let him run. Oh, that is beautiful. It is. Wow. Nice. Look at that. 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 Look
All right, that's a nice keeper. All right. Oh, so, hey, nice job. So let's introduce him to Clint and May. That's Clint. He came out fishing with me today, and he's wanting to catch fish and learn how to catch fish. Yeah. So that's a nice 17 awesome. inch trout he's going to be able to take home. Um, uh, well, I'm a noob, so uh, I guess I got to unhook him somehow. Yeah. Me? <laughs> I don't know. What well, I do. got some pliers. Hey, you're gonna keep that guy? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, so, so pliers. if you're gonna keep him, you don't necessarily have to be so gentle with him. Oh, so. And I got a stringer to put him on in the box so we keep him fresh in the water. And you were using a worm and a bobber? Yeah, the float. You see? Me up There's with. the trout float. It's about four feet of leader, and we got this and he about, was fishing five, about only five feet, six feet out from the shore. Yeah. yeah. So hey, all right, way to go. Okay. And you say that's your first one in how long? Oh, first one in Central Oregon. In Central Oregon, wow. Yeah. Ah, so this is really exciting. Holy Let's... smokes, it's down there. Yeah. How do you do that? I got these. Okay, oh yeah, that'll be great. That'll okay. be helpful. This is what you need to... So, I would say he's happy he uh, came oh. fishing today. Oh, totally. A beautiful worked. trout, though. It is. Okay. Oh, I thought I had it. Dude, I need some light. Yeah, yeah. Then in some light there. Careful, it's kind of loose. We can wash them off later. I need to learn how to okay. do this, mate. Oh, there. He came off. There you go. You must have loosened it enough to... Oh. That is... Oh. Actually... Wow, that's beautiful. Let's put them in here and rinse them. That is not something to brown on. I know. But yeah, you, you better do that one, right? See, and, oh, so that's a beautiful trout. I would, you got your tape measure, I think that might be longer than 18. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. let me go. That might be longer than 18. So what's the rules for keeping? You're allowed, you're allowed five trout a day and you're allowed, one of the five can be over 20 inches. I'm so excited. That's amazing. That was early in the day, too. Yeah. I'm so excited. Hey, Sarah, Daddy, catch fish. Okay. It was just so cool. Okay. Yeah, just as I said, almost eight. Yeah, 18 inches. Wow. Just like I said, Let's 18, go lay them. 18 inch trout. Beautiful fish. So we just hook them here. Yeah. Okay. Oh, wait, we need yeah, you need to take it. I need take, to zero it off. Yeah, zero it out first. Technology. See, yeah. you obviously have it. See, this off. side's pound, so you want to hit that side, yeah. It says power zero. Um, choose hold. So let me just hold it and see if it'll switch. <laughs> All right, Clint. Well, I'll get the weight in kilograms and convert it. All right. Wow, this is a nice one. It is. I've never caught a fish. I've never caught a trout this good in my life. See how big it is. What? <laughs> it's a little bit. Oh, 6.19, 6.2 kilograms. May? What's um? What's 6.2 times 2.2? .2? Okay, times 2.2. Two times 2.2? Yep. All right, there you go. Hey, I got to get back to shooting that how-to yeah, video. Thank you. That was amazing. <laughs> Super excited. All right. Wow, that was awesome. I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. As soon as the camera guy gets back over here, we'll get back to doing the how-to video. That's pretty exciting, though. So... 
Any hoot? So, like I was saying, we're, we we used a uh, Berkeley knot to connect the leader to the marabou. And so we're only using about an eight inch down to the green leech. And it's a balanced leech we're using. This is the green one. We've got black ones as well. And so uh, I've got a 15 pound leader to the fly line right here. I connected that myself. And then once we get so far down this way, uh, Oh, right here it is. I've got an eight pound leader the rest of the way. Now, I may make adjustments on where I'm fishing, like if I'm fishing a cricket, I might go with a four pound or a six pound uh, leader uh, that connects to the eight pound test. So. That's it for the fly fishing part. And then the next is going to be Sort of the same as a worm, but not really, because you don't always throw a trout magnet with a float. Sometimes you just throw it and bounce it off the bottom, or bounce it up high in the water column. And what I done was just use the loop knot to connect it. And I've got a braided line for my main line. I got eight pound line for my leader, and then I've got easy trout float again. And then. A lot of times with this rod or even one of the other rods that's got a uh, braided line is I'll throw spinners on there. Oh, let me show you different colors of trout, trout magnets I've got here. Uh, different colors. Um, always good to have multiple colors for different days. You just never know what they're going to have. And those work pretty good for catching trout. And then the next thing I want to show you is just spinners and... I forgot my other box of spinners and spoons and stuff up in the car, so just Panther Martins, Blue Foxes, uh, any kind of spoon will work nicely. Uh, just having a multiple of different choices for for the fish to have. And so, you know, that's pretty much it for that. Um, hopefully you guys enjoy this video. Hopefully you guys find, some, find it useful and helpful for catching fish fishing from the bank. Um, and as you've seen, somebody caught a fish on a worm and Bob already. So we're going to put that in this video as well. That way you guys see that. So until next time, this is G-Man out.